Okay, we're back. We're live. This is the movie show. I'm Jay Fidel. Um, George Kaysen can't make it today, but we have Stephanie Stoll Dalton as our co host and movie reviewer. And we're going to review a movie that we were both impressed with, and that is Te Ata. And Te Ata is the stage name for Mary Thompson Fisher, uh, who was a Native American Chickasaw from Oklahoma, uh, from a small town in Oklahoma. Stephanie, uh, you're simpatico with this movie because you follow Native American issues. Uh, can you talk about your familiarity with Native American issues? Well, I worked uh, on uh, Indian reservations um, in schools uh, as part of my research um, activities, and uh, particularly in the Navajo Nation at Red Rock, um, excuse me, Rough Rock, and at uh, the Zuni Pueblo in New Mexico. So, um, and actually it was an extension of the work here in Hawaii that the Kamehameha schools and Bishop's estate supported to uh, improve the performance of the academic performance of uh, Hawaiian youngsters uh, in the public schools. So um, the work that was done to, to promote their achievement in schools here in Hawaii was also then uh, placed in Native American schools um, to see um, you know what the effects of it were there, and that it wasn't just just culturally dedicated, but it was a broader application to students of need in need. Well, the history of the American Indian is intertwined inextricably with the development of the country, uh, and we forget that because I think we've been distracted by Hollywood, and they have created a caricature of the American Indian through all the uh, you know cowboy and Indian movies, uh, which is not accurate. Um, but when you start studying American history, you you start um, examining all the various tribes and uh, the, I should say the various cultures, Indian cultures around the country, and in Canada for that matter. I suppose you could also say Mexico, but we have a special legacy of American Indian culture. And I think we have to appreciate that. We don't appreciate it enough. And this movie makes you stop and think, gee whiz, this is something I should know about. Um, so I, you know, I have to say it touched me. You want to you want to tell the plot, uh, or we we can share on the plot. What just generally, what is the story of Mary Thompson Fisher's life, Te Ata's life? Uh, Te Ata was obviously a, a remarkable child from the get go. She was named uh, by her grandmother Te Ata um, as uh, the of one who brings the morning so the grandmother had a sense of this child's spirit in in naming her the name um teata uh she adopted as her stage name uh when she she got to that point in her life yeah so she um she lived um in oklahoma with a, her family and her mother was german and her father of course was chickasaw and they were members of of the community there, the tribal community in Oklahoma. But Jay, as I recall, they came, um, they, their, they, their ancestors, not their ancestors, but in 1837, we had the Trail of Tears and they moved all of the uh, Chick Chuck, uh, Chickasaw people into Oklahoma from their original native land. So they, they didn't make that trip themselves, but, but they were the descendants of those who had made that rough trip. Um, and I think you mentioned that was as a result of one of our former presidents, Andrew Jackson, correct? You yeah, he, he, he uh, brutally moved um, the Indians out of Georgia and into Oklahoma, and uh, that was called the Trail of Tears. And mm -hmm. there was the Chickasaws, there was the Cherokee, and there was the Choctaw Indians. Um, mm -hmm. And I guess they all knew each other, but this was the Chickasaw Nation, so to speak, and it was a community. And um, they were very strong, you know, very strong on family. It was such a kindly family, um, a family that was so simpatico to, uh, to her, to Teata. Mind you, the, the actress uh, who, who plays the role is not an American Indian. Uh, she's a Peruvian Indian. And she, she is an extraordinary woman. Uh, who had a certain amount of grace. Her name is Corienka Pilcher uh, from uh, uh, Peru. And um, she's 
you know, I mean, in a sort of international, multicultural way, an Indian way, she's really beautiful. And she had such grace in this movie. Um, I would say that she was an important part of the success of the movie. And it won all kinds of awards, this movie, uh, which oh. is something for essentially a, a historical documentary. Um, so uh, I think it touches you from the beginning till the end. But as you mentioned before the show began, Stephanie, um, you know, there was violence and there was racism. Oklahoma has a special place in American racism, seems like. Hard to say, but uh, he was, don't forget, uh, you know, Oklahoma City. Don't forget that, that, uh, that, that town uh, in or around uh, uh, Oklahoma City, which was burned to the ground. Uh, with the black community in 1920 or so. That was really Rosewood. Horrible. I think that was Rosewood. Rosewood, yeah. So Oklahoma has a, a special a special brand. And, and there were people in Oklahoma that didn't like Indians either. And you see that in this movie. They you know, tried all they could to hold them down and to, you know, limit their options and, and uh, to, uh, oh, yeah, and to outlaw their, their Indian culture. Uh, which I thought was really interesting. We, we didn't know that. This happened in Hawaii, too. Um, you know, there were moves uh, after territorialization uh, where uh, the guys in charge were trying to hold the Native Hawaiians down and uh, uh, outlaw hula, outlaw speaking of the Hawaiian language. And so it was really gross. And uh, that happened here, too. The same thing in Oklahoma. And so we, we here in Hawaii can appreciate you know, what, what happened in Oklahoma with the Indians, all of them. Uh, so, but you, you mentioned before the show that, the, you know, there was violence. Oklahoma was not without violence. And we only saw a little violence in this movie. And that's okay, because I'm, I'm getting to the point where I really don't want to see violence in movies anymore. But can you talk about the hard times that she had? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that the, the, the movie was very soft on the violence so it was intimated so um she had they did expose she did witness a murder and of course the family was concerned that uh you know uh, re repercussions i i think that's one thing that came across it and at the end of the movie the there there was an attack on the father and his store but all all through the movie there was the intimation of the white man uh was gonna um you know, to visit violence upon these people or get in, in there or make them do things that they didn't want to do. I think there was an incredibly good scene of the the leader of the group, the president of the nation, the leader of the, the Chickasaw Nation going, I guess, to Washington, where he met with the committee, where evidently, according to the treaty, they were owed some uh finances and of course the committee uh members were unwilling to give the native americans that that money and it was just uh in the sort of way that that is so discouraging to see because it there wasn't a good reason for them not to give give the money they were owed the money and yet i think we've heard about this with treaties for all the time is that there would be these agreements and then the 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 U.S. side wouldn't come through on it, but I mean that the, it is fortunate that the Native Americans had the paper uh, that they had with the U.S. government because that's one thing. I think that's one of the issues with the Hawaiian nation is that they didn't have paper with uh, the U.S. government, whereas the Native Americans. So, in the work that we know Senator Inouye did for the Native Americans and also tried to do for the the Hawaiians too, um, he, he was able to accomplish more with, for the um, Native Americans because there, there is a paper trail. Mm -hmm. um, but, but it's something that was rarely um, respected and, and performed. And that was the case then for the, this Chickasaw Nation. They were expecting that leader uh, to come back with money from that visit to Washington. And of course he came back with that bad news. And in that way we see the, the dignity and and the patience that these people were able to muster in the face uh, face of so much, um, de, you know, destruction and um, 
you know, d d difficulty. It, it was just incredible with all the hard work because they, they said to the committee that the Native Americans, um, the Indians were always, they're very familiar with hard work and making a living off the land. And, and as the committee had suggested to this leader that, that the, the Indians should pull themselves up by their bootstraps using that very, that very term. And they said they were quite familiar with uh, making a living off the land and, and certainly um, seen them have to endure that, that kind of treatment and live through it. And You're right. It, it, it was an exploration of the character of the Chickasaw and other Indians. Uh, they were honest. They were hardworking. Uh, and as I said before, their families were so strong. And her family, Teatis' family, was so strong. Um, they they uh, encouraged her in every way they could. They were like, you know, a funny thing, like, like an immigrant family. They had all these barriers and uh, they had to run the gauntlet on so many things. And they, they got her into school, um, which was what, you know, her, her plan. Um, that was the uh, Oklahoma Women's College. She was the first Indian ever in that school. She was born in 1895. That had to be in the 20s or so. Mm -hmm. um, and she died in, I think, 1995. She lived a good life. Mm -hmm. And um, she, she did well and got, and got serendipitously into acting. And uh, her acting was really two kinds of acting. One was regular acting, like for Broadway. Uh, and the other was uh, acting um, Indian parts to express Indian culture. And she was good at both. You, you recall? I do. And I think that it is also important to point out that, that her teachers, she had two teachers, two women who, who were very helpful to her. They, they saw that she was struggling and had dreams and had no way to know how to go forward. And um, at both those stages, out of high school and into college, she got help because her family didn't want her to leave home because, as you said, the family focus was that number one, that was there. The dad wanted everybody right there at home together and, and to, to, to love and work together. But she knew she had a gift and needed to go and do something about it. And she found these women, or they found her to help her. Like in the college, she was the first Native girl, Native student. And uh, the college was for women. And um, and of course the girls dissed her. I mean, they it it was that that scene again where um, she was ignored and isolated. And it took a teacher there. It was the theater. The, the teacher was uh, uh, Miss Davis, if you recall, yes. played by Cindy Pickett, and yes. she was she was a very powerful character. She understood. Uh, she supported Tayata. She gave Tayata Tayata wor words of wisdom. An encouragement that really was um, an important mentor uh, mm -hmm. for Teata to take up acting and to you know realize her destiny. Mm -hmm. uh, and then she went off and and well, she was very successful when um, she well each time that that woman Miss Davis she encouraged her to look to her heritage for her expression for what she would work on as an actress. She said. Everybody does Shakespeare. Everybody um, is is doing the same thing who come through my classes. Why don't you think about what you are and what you can bring to us from your background? And and she did that. And uh, I thought that that was an interesting theme because she was especially helped there. And then she was very successful in uh, sharing and relating and bringing her classmates in, into what was her lived experience. But that ties into later when she went when she went on to work in New York and she was trying trying out for all of the Broadway plays. Well, again, you know, the notion was uh, this had to be in the 30s, the 40s. Um, you know, there's no place like Broadway. She went to Broadway. Um, mm -hmm. She lived a life of poverty. She waited for years to get a part. She oh, finally yeah. got a part in a Broadway musical, yeah. and and it was successful. It was a successful musical. But and she wasn't. Had, yeah, go ahead. She wasn't the lead, but she she was she she got notoriety. She could have gotten more roles out of that, yeah. but she wasn't satisfied with it. And it took her meeting a young, uh, not so young man, but a, a man who she fell in love with, and he was the one who had taken an interest in Native Americans too and other cultures. He'd been studying. I think he was a professor. 
But anyway, yes, he was, and and his name was Fisher, that and hence her oh, that married his... name, her ultimate her ultimate was married her name was yeah. Fisher. It was Mary Thompson Fisher, That's and it. Fisher was a, he was prematurely gray. I don't know if that was you know <laughs> the the way he really was, um, but he was played by Mackenzie Aston, Clyde Fisher. He was a I guess he was a uh, uh, an academician. Yes, uh, he, he, well, he was and, an anthropologist, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he cared a lot about Native Hawaiians, but he really cared about her. He was mm -hmm. so tolerant and helpful. Um, he he backed her up in anything she wanted to do. He was the perfect husband for her, really. Mm -hmm. and, well, he and, recognized, he recognized that she had something she had to do, that there was something she had to give, and she yeah. needed to work on that. But he guided her, too, like the previous uh, mentor, um, at her, her school, at the girls' school, then he got her to understand why she was feeling so empty because she she didn't feel that she had had achieved or out of that Broadway role, and that's when um, he took her to um, to well to an experience in a movie theater where they had a short on um, cowboys and Indians, and they were saying, and it was very very devastating for her to see that. Yeah, she but, stood up and she had to leave; she couldn't stand it. Too horrible. Yeah, that it was awful. But he brought her around to understand that she she was the one to bring all of that into America, in, into this uh, mainstream America. She had the gift to bring that in a way to to share it for its beauty and and uh, its value. And, and she that, did. She did. I mean, this actress did, mm -hmm. uh, even though she's not an American Indian, she understood Indian. Um, and and in in real life, uh, Teata had a grace, don't you think? I mean, the movie accurately portrayed, I think, the grace that she had. She was yes. the, the finest example of Indian culture and Indian sensibilities. Uh, uh, we should appreciate it and cast aside the caricatures that mm -hmm. Hollywood has given us over the years. Mm -hmm. um, these are beautiful people. Yes, um, yes. It, it's kind of like, the hula in Hawaii, you know, you see the Hawaiians go into their performance of the hula and with their own language and music. And then the same way she did it, going into the performance in the costume of Native Americans and uh, using her language and her song and drawing then on all the stories she had to, to share because she had become the storyteller. She was Teata. Who brings mourning, and she also brought the stories. It was really beautiful, yeah. and uh, yeah. and it was ultimately recognized by Eleanor Roosevelt, who who <laughs> caught wind of her and became she became her friend. Uh, and Eleanor Roosevelt had FDR um, invite her to the White House, mm -hmm. uh, which was very touching because of, you know FDR and Eleanor especially recognized her her cultural value and purity. And so they had her sleep, you recall? They had her sleep in the Lincoln bedroom. She, she lived, she stayed at the West, slept overnight. I haven't done that myself, and I know you haven't, but <laughs> that was really something. And even your brother hasn't done that, <laughs> so, And she, she was just sitting, sitting there in the uh, Lincoln bedroom. I, what, remember that? She, she was in the Lincoln bedroom, sitting there or on the bed or in the bed, and she said, well, Mr. Lincoln, I don't know what you think about this, but I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. And I'm sure he was mightily pleased. Well, it was very, it was very symbolic. Lincoln, you know, emancipated the slaves. Yeah. Well, Lincoln was there at the time, you know, the Indians were being mistreated. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were through the 19th century and well into the 20th century, and maybe to some extent even now. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, to be in the Lincoln bedroom was more than just to be in the Lincoln bedroom. It was mm -hmm. a symbolic statement, and Eleanor Roosevelt knew that, and FDR knew that, and and they were very classy, very kindly, and mm -hmm. and uh, there was so um, loving of her. So, and later, they, it said at the end there were credits uh, on the screen at the end. Uh, Eleanor Roosevelt had her also perform at their home, um, uh, where where. At, at their home along the river in New York, um, at their mansion, when mm -hmm. they had the King and Queen of England visit. So it was um, Queen Elizabeth's mother and dad, Queen Elizabeth II's mother and dad were visiting with the Roosevelt's at 
the their their mansion in New York. And um, so I had seen another movie where uh, it was about Eleanor Roosevelt and Eleanor Roosevelt had set up this Native American performance. At that time, I didn't know who Te Teana was, but it turned out that, that it was Teana. But what she was trying to do was, was introduce the King and Queen of England to Native American music, song, and performance. And, 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 and in a way, it, um, I think that Eleanor Roosevelt was a little bit cheeky or trying to be a little bit naughty in exposing um, the king and queen to the Native American culture um, <laughs> that, that took them by surprise, and especially <laughs> the language and the music of the Native American. Clearly in that movie, the, the king and queen had never seen anything <laughs> like that before, but they, they, they surely knew they were getting the best. So that, that was really interesting to see those two things come together. And, <clears throat> well, her, I think her strength, and, and she recognized it, as you said, um, she was the storyteller, and she had all these stories. Um, you know, the, the the tradition of the Indians is you pass it on down the generations. And she had all these stories that she would tell, and she had this kind of pantomime way of pre uh, presenting it, you know, with bow and arrow and clothing and, uh, you know, special Indian clothing and, uh, and, and gestures, you know. It's almost like hula um, to express the stories. And and as she, you know, became better and better at it, as she realized her destiny, uh, she it became more captivating, and people wanted to see her do that. Um, and I think she 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 went a long way to neutralize the, you know, negative impressions and caricatures that the country had um, locked onto because of the Hollywood rendition. So, um, you know, she did a lot. She did a lot to represent Native Hawaiian culture. On the other hand, I would say that there weren't a lot of Teatas. Um, she was really unique. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, you know, even till today, we see the character prevail, the caricature prevail. Uh, and I think we have to appreciate, and this movie helps you do that, appreciate the Native culture, appreciate their grace and their character and their kindness uh, and, and the fact that we have not treated them well, we the country have not treated them well. There was a statute, I don't know if you recall, there was a statute that some of these uh, anti-Indian bigots uh, were relying on, which uh, it was a federal statute, um, diminishing their culture, prohibiting their culture. And FDR, I'm sure at the urging of Eleanor Roosevelt, uh, had, that, had that statute reversed, re repealed. In, in the okay, time, that statute, time. you're saying, okay, I thought you were saying statute, no, statute. So, so yes, they they had outlawed in Oklahoma any performance. Uh, it's same like what the popes apologized for, and and that, that and in Canada that they did this with their first peoples. Um, just the brutal treatment of people couldn't speak their language. We did it in our Indian boarding schools too, and trying to make the children white culture and to forget about their own culture, and it created tremendous distress and. Uh, and took away and lost languages because of it too. And and people report on that as being really a nightmare part of their life. And some of those uh, of our, I think the Hopis lost generations of children because they took the children away from their mesas. Um, and then when they came back or um, didn't come back, they lost, they lost the understanding about how to raise children. They actually did, the children were gone for, for so long and they had no experience with them and they, they lost uh, their parenting skills. It, would, it just has been tragic, the, the treatment. Yeah, tragic and it's the ultimate racism to destroy the culture. Mm -hmm. And there were people that were determined to do that in this country. So, you know, the United States has a very mixed bag on a history of racism. And we, we tend to think it's uh, only about, um, you know, slavery. It's only about African-Americans in the South, but no. No, it's, uh, it started out with Andrew Jackson and the likes uh, in the early 19th century. I shouldn't say it started out. It started out in the 1600s with the African-Americans being brought here as slaves. But we were doing similar things with the Indians. Um, and um, Andrew Jackson did his fair share, and there were people in this country uh, you know, who, who were very unkind. That's, that's a very 
modest word for it, very unkind to the Native Hawaiians. And so we really have to get off that. We have to get off bigotry. That's what this movie is so genteel, so, what's the word? It's, it, it really impresses you and it, it reaches you um, about racism, about American racism. We really have had enough of that. Um, <laughs> bigotry still lives in this country. We have to cut that out. And that's what this movie is saying. It's, it's not just one group, it's many groups. Mm -hmm. And this just happened to be a group who we mistreated and then we forgot that we mistreated them. Mm -hmm. Well, I think too, for some reason, there could, there, the appreciation for the complexity and the aesthetic and the, the beauty of the cultures, um, it, somehow that gets blocked. And that, that's what's disturbing about racism. It blinds people to what is standing, what is right in front of them in beauty, like they say in the Navajo, walk in beauty. The women, people walk in beauty. And, and the, when you've got that racism screen up, that can't be seen. So to go to these dances at these Pueblos when they have them um, in the summer for corn or rain or whatever, and to see the meticulous effort that they make and the the, the community coming together to do these dances. Everybody does the dancing. And um, there's simple steps, but it's absolutely very, very complicated. And the, the history and the tradition is right there before you. And the challenge of putting that on and the prep for it, because it goes on for hours, they have to be very much in shape for it. And you stand there and think, how could anybody disregard the capacity the brilliance of these people that they they can do this in the middle of the desert with you know almost no resources and yet come out with these incredible expressions of beauty um through dance and song and the way they put materials you together. know you know when i watched the movie the first time uh i was touched emotionally by it i could feel it in me um i i, I didn't know these things and it taught me a lot, and um, I was emotionally, in, in, you know, uh, engaged with this movie. But then, in anticipation of our discussion today, as I often do, I went back and watched the trailer, um, so I could refresh myself on the gestalt of the movie. And you know what? I was likewise emotionally engaged with the trailer. This is a very powerful movie. And it, it, you know, it deserved all the awards it got. So if I give you um, one to 10, Stephanie, uh, how do you rate this movie? Where? Um, is it a, a one being the worst and 10 being the best? Well, I'm, I'm going to say 10 because I, I personally appreciated the way they, they handled the intimations of brutality and instead of coming full bore on that and putting us through you know some of the experiences all the way through i appreciated the way they handled that that that, that the threat was there the danger was in the air um and then the things that she actually um had to um act through were things um of a social nature that were important to developing the plot so I, I appreciated the way they handled all of that. And, and, and that, so they showed all the potential danger that was there for a young person, a young Indian person, Native person going through. I could feel, you know, the, the, the terror that, that people have, I'm sure, whenever they were put in situations like that or these powerful other people came around. I mean, I, I, I got that sense of it. And yet she stood her ground in dignity. As you said, you know, she was courageous and stood her ground. But for the people that suffered these situations, it, it must have just been terrorizing. And uh, just you're right. That was the that was the exceptional thing about her. As uh, she stood her ground uh, as a person, re in, uh, the real person. Uh, mm -hmm. Teata, you know, had the ability to say no to people. He had mm -hmm. the ability to avoid being, you know, manipulated and so forth. And 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 that was a strong part of the real story. But the other thing that struck me, and I don't know how to express this, but the actress was so Teata. She was, she managed to make herself into Teata. She had, <laughs> she had the grace of the character she was portraying. 
you could hardly take your eyes off her because she was Teyana. And she expressed that culture. She expressed all those uh, characteristics and character points so well um, that you thought she was really the person she was portraying. And yeah. Jay, we didn't say that she was not, she was turned down by the Carnegie Institute for their program. Uh, um, and what did she do? She didn't crumble. She got on a train and went to the school and demanded to be given um, a chance to display her skill, her, her talent. And she wouldn't take no for an answer. So that was really impressive for a young woman to uh, to do that. And she had the confidence to know that if she could show them that that it would make the difference. And sure enough, they 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 let they brought the whole committee in after she got in the way of any anybody doing that. Was that you're right? That was a very impressive part of the movie and an impressive part of her character and her story. Mm -hmm. At she the, had the same strength. time, at the same time, Stephanie, there was a modesty. Uh, and still a, modest a humanity, about it. Yes. A, a yes. Kindness about it, Very a sweetness, a, a purity. Uh, so she she was mm -hmm. she had that and uh, call it an Indian courage, mm -hmm. but she also had an Indian kindness and modesty and patience. Mm -hmm. And it all came together in a, a very quality human being. And I think that's I would also give it a 10, Stephanie. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think so. And as you said, it won many awards, so uh, we're not alone in thinking about it being a very excellent performance and production. Very good. Yeah. Well, thank you, Stephanie. Thanks for looking at it. And thanks for joining me on the show. And and I hope George Kaysen watches the show at some time and, uh, <laughs> and appreciates our discussion here about Teyana. Thank you so well, much, thanks. Stephanie. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.